Now, if arterioles will become very narrow, during the systole, when a lot of blood comes here, can it easily move to that side? No. So, even if heart is not pumping, because after the systole, heart will undergo relaxation. There will be onset of diastole. During the diastole, of course, aortic valve closes. Blood cannot go back. The only choice for the blood during diastole was that no blood coming during the diastole here, but whatever blood is pumped here, that should rush to the capillary side and venous side during the diastole. Now, if arterioles are open too much, most of blood will run forward and pressure in the diastole will fall. But if arterioles are too narrow, they are tight, do you think blood which is present during the diastole here, can it easily move? So blood will be retained on the arterial side and pressure in the arterial tree during the diastole will be also increased and we say that diastolic blood pressure increase. There is increase in diastolic blood pressure. So that was our target. What was the target? That when we were losing the blood, systolic and diastolic blood pressure were going down. By increasing the venoconstriction and venous return, we increase the cardiac output and systolic blood pressure. By increasing the arteriolo-constriction, we reduce the movement of blood from arterial side to the venous side and blood which is trapped here, even in during diastole, it maintains the pressure up. Is it right? The story is not yet over. Meanwhile, angiotensin 2 will also go to cells here and these cells in the outer, what is this? Zona glomerulosa. These are the cells in outer adrenal cortex. These cells are called zona glomerulosa. And what are the receptors here? These cells also have receptors, which are receptors for angiotensin 2. When angiotensin 2 works here, what happens? When angiotensin 2 work over here, these cells start releasing a substance called aldosterone. Angiotensin 2 will act on zona glomerulosa and lead to the release of aldosterone. What this aldosterone will do? This aldosterone, now let's see how aldosterone work. Okay, I will draw just one cell here. This is one cell I have enlarged and this cell is called principal cell. Principal cell the P cells and last part of nephron. Usually they are in the second half of the distal convoluted tubules and they are present in collecting tubules. What are these cells? Principal cells. Actually, this is, let's suppose, the nucleus of principal cell. It has different genes here. Of course, every nucleus has genes. Now listen. What aldosterone will do? This aldosterone, which is released by, from where? Zona glomerulosa. It will come into circulation. Through the circulation, it will reach to the P cells. And what it will do? This aldosterone will come here. Let's suppose this is the aldosterone. When aldosterone enters into this cell, there it will find the receptors for aldosterone. And let's suppose this is the receptor for aldosterone. So this is a very special type of protein which act like a key. And this key is operated by which, which substance? Aldosterone. This is aldosterone operated receptors. What they do? As soon as aldosterone bind, this protein rush to the nucleus and open the locks of the genes. What is it is going to do? open the locks of the genes. When gene number 1 is opened by this aldosterone receptor complex, gene number 1 start making a special type of protein and that protein is planted into, into basolateral membrane. What is this? Basal side and lateral side of which cells? Principal cells. So these special proteins are planted into basolateral membrane under the direction of aldosterone. What these proteins are doing? Are they doing anything important or just Paris fashion? Yeah. What these proteins are doing? These are sodium potassium ATPases. They are present in every cell. But in this kidney cell, they are present on basolateral membrane and not present on lumeral membrane. 
But under the direction of aldosterone, the concentration of sodium potassium ATPases on the basolateral membrane has been increased. So what really happens that these cells, these are sodium potassium pump. So they keep on throwing the sodium from the cell to extracellular environment. So cells start throwing the sodium from its cytoplasm to the blood. And at the same time, you must be knowing, they are accumulating in the cell. What is this? Potassium. These are sodium potassium pumps. So it means under the influence of aldosterone, principal cell start throwing the sodium from their cytosol to the interstitium and start accumulating potassium. So these cells become extremely poor in sodium and extremely rich in potassium under the directions of aldosterone mediated enhanced sodium potassium ATPases. Then gene number 2 is also activated by the same gene number 2 is also activated by the same receptor system aldosterone receptor. When second gene is stimulated this produces a product which will not go to the basolateral membrane which will product will come and it will be planted into what is this? Luminal membrane. The special protein which is product of the second gene, this protein fits into luminal side. And what is this protein? This is sodium channels. These are not pumps, these are simply channels. They let the sodium pass freely as sodium want to move. Now, whatever little amount of sodium will come here, if the cell is extremely poor in sodium, sodium will rush in. You know, things move from high concentration to low concentration. As soon as sodium come in through the pump, it is thrown to the blood. This is how sodium is reabsorbed under the direction of aldosterone. That aldosterone first enhances the activity of the sodium potassium ATPases. So that cells keep on pushing too much sodium from the cell to the blood. Cells become extremely poor in sodium. Then sodium automatically starts shifting from the what is this? Nephron lumen to the cell and from the cell to the blood. Is that right? So that sodium which was about to be lost into urine is reabsorbed. And you know who loves to follow sodium? Who loves to follow sodium? I think it's water. Right? So naturally, sodium is reabsorbed along with that, water is also reabsorbed. And of course, cell was rich in potassium. So third gene is activated and third gene make potassium channels. And potassium is more inside the cell or in the lumen? Inside. inside the cell. Even he knows. Good. So what will happen? Potassium will start leaking out. So under the direction of what? Under the direction of aldosterone, principal cells start reabsorbing sodium and water to the blood and start secreting the extra potassium into urine. Is that right? Now, this salt and water, this salt and water, or you can say simply sodium and water, which is retained in the blood, they will decrease the blood volume or increase the blood volume? So it's very easy. If blood volume is increased, if blood volume is increased, then venous return will, yes, increase. So cardiac ventricular fillings will increase. Ventricular contractility will increase and systolic blood pressure will go up. This is how aldosterone by retaining salt and water take the systolic blood pressure up. Another support to that. Aldosterone, angiotensin 2 has done this work through the aldo. Now angiotensin 2 will, angiotensin 2 will go to the central nervous system. I think it's a long travel. And it will work on receptors present in the hypothalamus. Angiotensin 2 will go and work with the receptors on hypothalamus and force some neurons in hypothalamus and they will activate action potential which will reach to the posterior pituitary and from there what will come out? Don't tell me any funny thing. What will come out from posterior pituitary? ADH. Don't tell me oxytocin. That is not going to help the patient right now.